it did it hit me one night. I was it was when uh, that song like made it from the bottom or now we're here or some yeah, bullshit. Drink, yeah. And, yeah, and I was in the club with some <laughs> like people that were all right, and it, it clicked. I was like, all these people I'm around have not made it here, and their hands are in the air, like, yeah, we made it. And I was like, no, motherfuckers, none of you have made it. <laughs> and like, like maybe a couple, maybe like two, but I was like, I haven't either. I was like, what am I doing? What's up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris. I'm your host, the Breadwinner Podcast. Appreciate you joining us today. I apologize, my voice is. Is, uh, is almost gone, but it's hanging in there uh, just a little bit, enough to get this podcast done. We are actually live uh, here with my man, Corey. I'm going to introduce him in just a second, but let me tell you kind of how this all played out. Uh, just on Facebook and Instagram, I started seeing these photos and these videos pop up at this new gym in town, and it instantly caught my eye. I'm like, this is interesting. This is different. This is new. And it continually just started blowing me away. I was like, whoever's doing this stuff, like they get it. Like they understand marketing. They understand how to actually operate like the year we live in, uh, which traditionally gyms don't and traditionally most businesses don't. Uh, but was just got intrigued. And then randomly, I think my wife is in like a book club with your sister. Yeah. And, she, and I was asking, I'm like, man, I want to figure out who owns this uh, gym, who's operating this gym, because I want to figure out, I want to get them on the podcast because they're doing something right, uh, and I love it. And she was like, are you serious? She's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Carrie's brother. And I'm like, well, let's freaking, let's get them connected and let's do it. And so we're actually right down here in the gym uh, as we speak. So I do want to bring Mr. Corey Kiefer on the line and uh, tell everybody, man, who you are, where you're from, and uh, kind of what your main focus is right now in the world. Yeah, what's up, guys? Uh, so... I uh, was born in Maryland. My dad's a pilot, so traveled a little bit growing up, but uh, grew up mostly up in uh, Seneca area, South Carolina, so the upstate, so keeping in the 864, and um, always traveled since my dad was a pilot, kind of took that for granted growing up, but uh, it's kind of full circle back now of just helping being cultured, which is you know a main part of what we do here at the gym. Uh, but went to college at Charleston, uh, graduated from there, didn't really know what the hell I wanted to do, backpacked Europe for a couple months, came back, and uh, my parents had a gym that I never really cared about, and they were like, hey, we're about to sell it, and I was like, look, before you sell it, let me get my hands dirty with it, and let's see, from janitor to payroll to anything I can do, let me just figure it out, and let me just experiment with it, and you know, worst case scenario, it, it goes to shit, you sell it anyways, type sure. of deal, you know, and that, uh, that first year, we grew like 25%. Next year, it grew 50, and it was like doubling, doubling, and um, we ended up buying like a million dollar building, a huge 14,000 square foot building, where we kind of rebranded everything there, and that was a couple years ago, and that was kind of really when I was like, you know, this is you know becoming something bigger than just a gym. Um, found this place down here in Greenville and was like, I want to bring some culture, music, fashion into a place more of a platform where you know you don't have to wear your headphones where serendipity can happen where you can just run into someone start chatting it up and everyone's like-minded and next thing you know it's a business partner a new friend or just anything in general you know because I was talking to my homies and I was like yo where do we meet people other than the bars and they're like uh, I don't know and I was like yeah. you go to a new city like where do you meet people at and like that's not like weird these like lame ass like meetup groups you don't find anyone there you know and no one wants to go to a bar by themselves so I was like it's cool to go to a gym by yourself mm -hmm. let's make that a place where you can just walk in like you see some cool shit on the wall you hear some cool tunes you know and just start chatting it up and you know let's see what happens from there so I uh, really wanted to bring that into a place that um, you know just felt cool yeah. you know that was like the biggest thing because like you were saying earlier is all these gym owners or people that are doing these like more big corporate gyms they don't have culture no one cares I would, I would ask people I'm like yo do you love the gym you go to and they're like ah it's a gym yeah. I'm like what well, let's bring some culture to that and like something that you feel a part of and that you want to tell people about and you want to be uh, involved in and that kind of was the spark to it so yeah, I'm so glad you just said culture because that was the exact next thing I was going to ask you because that's what it is like you're building an incredible culture and that's from the probably the first second third post I saw on Instagram it was like instantly what came in my head culture 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 and it was something very new and edgy and like you said bringing fashion and music and all these things which in our town of Greenville like I don't know if anybody's doing that like not just 
any gym, but I don't know if any business period or any organization period is is doing it and doing it the way that you're doing it. So where did that come from? This like this idea of building this culture and this idea of doing stuff that was so different. What was that transition like? Taking I guess what started as a very traditional gym. Yep. And was it a transition into this type of lifestyle culture, or was it just like, hey, we're going to rebrand and then boom, completely different overnight? So it was funny. Um, we we started slow with it, and I started just knocking walls down at the other gym and started just mixing things up. And I'm not an artist, but they were trying to charge us like 15 grand to paint the walls white. I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, not a chance. Like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do with it. And I started painting stuff, and people like started like, yo, that. I like that wall a lot. Started painting. I was like, that brings good feelings. I was like, okay, cool. Let's play on that. And then I started like, just really like what I'm passionate about. Like, I love just art in general. I love fashion. I love music. And one thing I, I love about those is you can connect with people yeah. through music and not speak the same language, not know who they are, but you can be at a concert and vibe with someone and it kind of transcends culture barriers or anything just by hearing a song. And same with fashion. You can walk by someone in the street and they have something cool. Like I noticed you were wearing some Yeezys. Like I could just see you walking on the street and yeah. be like, okay, I already like a little bit of part of him without talking to you, without saying anything yeah. about you. And same with fitness and things too. If you see someone in shape, you can connect with them on a level without speaking to them, without knowing who they are and traveling to Europe a little bit I was able to kind of like see that and I was like meeting these people and kind of immersing myself through connections and that's what the main connections were and I was like you know some boutique style gyms were doing this like soul cycle have some culture yeah. to it but it's just cycle I'm like I'm not gonna do that five days mm -hmm. a week you know and all these like actual gyms were like corporate which suck you know I mean yeah. it's just like there's nothing about it it's very standard yeah. basic like you're pretty much putting equipment in like four walls of like an office space mm -hmm. and they just they're unmotivating like you hate yeah. going there and everyone looks at it like a second job yeah. and i'm like all right let me look at the psychology of this is everyone loves to look forward to the weekend to go out and i'm like why do people like going out and drinking when they know they're gonna wake up with a hangover mm -hmm. hate themselves and be like man i'm never drinking again mm -hmm. and do it the same you know again the next day when they inherently know it's bad for them but it's a universal known that like working out is good for you, but yeah. yet so little people do it because it's like a second job it fucking sucks. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's make it where they look forward to coming here because you can meet people because the atmosphere is dope because you're going to hear new tracks because you're going to see like cool artwork, mm -hmm. you know, where it, it makes it an experience yeah. where you look forward to it like you're going out instead of like looking at it as like, oh shit, I got to go work out today like a second job. Yeah. So trying to really push that mindset behind it, you know, is kind of where we're and at going. the very least. It's just that 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 little little extra needed motivation when someone gets home from working all day and they're like man i need to go to the gym and it's that crucial fragile period of time that like 20 minutes of like just got home and you're either putting on gym clothes or you're going to the couch and that one little bit of motivation that they need to actually get up and go yep. do something it's so funny you, know, you talk about music and it's insane how much music affects just the quality of a workout like i cannot work out without my headphones on with music blasting but i can't tell you we travel four nights a week uh, i spent 238 nights in a hotel last year and so i'm in random gyms all over the place all the time and i can't tell you how many times i've been in there trying to do deadlifts and i'm listening to like genie in a bottle like christina aguilera yeah. and like because <laughs> i like because i like because my headphones died yep and i'm like you've got to be kidding me like yep. this is t absolutely torture but creating that type of environment ultimately I guarantee creates better performance and better results from the people that are coming and it's funny because like you know a lot of people don't know where to find good music and it's funny like every time I'd go in my car my buddies would be like yo where'd you find that track yeah, yeah. where's this where's that so I was always about music I'm listening to music constantly like you said it puts you in different moods and that's like a like one thing no one forgets to bring with them to the gym is their headphones. Everyone's yeah. like, man, if I forget my headphones, I don't even go to the gym. There's like yeah. memes about yeah. it and yeah. shit, yeah. you know? And it's because these corporate gym, well, a lot of these style gyms are afraid to piss off the, you know, the crowd. They're, they kind of go for everyone. So it's like, you're gonna piss off the old people if you play that music so yeah. that we can't play it. So in turn, you play just like, bullshit like Taylor Swift that no yeah. one wants to listen to Spotify like not the premium editions it, you're getting like ads yeah, commercials and all that and so it's like this this like point where it's like okay you're not gonna piss anyone off but everyone has to wear headphones because no yeah. one's gonna like really enjoy it yeah. and I was like 
going even to the bars, you don't even hear cool tracks. Like back in the day, you yeah. used to, like before my time even, like you used to go to the bar to hear new songs yeah. and stuff. So I'm really big into like going to concerts just for the vibe of it. And I was like, let me just start finding these like dope songs that the clubs are not even playing. So at least people come here. And even if they get a shitty workout, they're like, I heard three new tracks that are like dope. Yeah. I put on my playlist, you know. For and sure. having it where if you don't have to wear headphones, you're more likely to talk to someone. Yeah. You know, not creep on them, like hitting on a girl, but like, yeah. hey, can I work in your set? Mm -hmm. And then while you're working in, be like, yo, what do you do? And yeah. next you know, start chopping it up. And it could be, you know, like I said, a business partner or just a friend, you know, yeah. or it could be nothing, you, you keep it moving, you yeah. know? So that's what, you know, a, a big thing that we're a part of is that music aspect. And, you know, I, it's not just me, it's my team. Darwin helps yeah. me with music. I mean, we're, we're playing music in here and he's like, what do you think about this? Let's play this or trying to have, you know, just do you, that. Do you guys have a playlist that people can have access yeah, to? Yeah, so we're trying to get that a little bit more public yeah. so that people can start following our you Spotify know, playlist. Gary right now has been killing it with that Monday to Monday playlist. And dude, he's been hacking that hip hop culture like no other yeah. right now. But the reality is the music culture, specifically hip hop culture, controls all of culture. It controls it fashion. It controls... Yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. As you were talking, I was thinking there was a couple of weeks ago. TJ and I, we were uh, headed to the gym, and I had lost my uh, my cord for uh, my Beats headphones that charges it, and they were dead, and I couldn't find it. And we pulled into the gym parking lot, and I was like, "Screw it!" And I went to Target and bought a brand new pair of headphones <laughs> just because I lost the cord for, for my headphones. I'm not, I'm not going in here. Yeah. And, and listening to like. You know Michael Bolton and, and, it try, is. and trying to play, and, and it's funny because like my mom will come in here and she'd be like, "Did they just uh, cuss?" And I'm like, "Mom, chill." Like, yes, they did, but like this is a part of it. Like, this is what we breed, and like that was one thing here is like I'm not trying to please everyone. You know, yeah, yeah. I tried to do that early, and I'm pissing people yeah. off when you try to like please everyone in high school or whatever. Like, you're gonna piss people off, and you're gonna have no friends if you try to be everyone. So I was like, look, I want to be true to myself, and I want to be a a part of a place that I would want to be a part of, you know, like have a gym that I would want to feel like yeah. it's my culture. And so we're just really just niching our focus between like the 25 to 35 year old market, the people who care about working out, people who care about going out, who care about fashion, who care yeah. about music and that. And really like, if you don't like it, it's cool. Yeah. There's any time yeah, fitness yeah. down the road. And I'll tell sure. people other gyms like, yeah. and I tell them straight up, I'm like, look, we got beer on tap here. Yeah. We got, you know, the, the music's uncut and it's raw. So if that like offends you, wear headphones or don't come here. Yeah. Like, you know, straight up and being very transparent. And it's actually like, you know, I thought it was gonna like upset people like telling them that, but they like appreciate that, I guess, sure. authentic factor that I'm just, you know, being very just upfront and like, hey, this is what we're about. And a lot of young people do like, I love it, man. Like, uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. And they're sure. like, I appreciate you seeing that because uh, one of the biggest like uh, growing uh, fitness in, uh, markets is the 25 to 35 year old. Yeah. It's that in the geriatrics, and I'm not dealing with that, you know, yeah. elderly crowd. So it's, you know, all these gyms are missing that, you know, and they're every, no one feels like they have a place where they can work out yeah. or they can really feel at home. And no one has a place you can really hang out. Like, where do you hang out besides the bars? Like, yeah. no one, coffee shops where everyone's like doing their computer shit mm -hmm. on at coffee shops. So you don't really have a place to like get creative yeah. and like maybe talk to someone else or maybe kind of get something flowing. So trying to be that too. That's so true. I mean, you're creating community and you said the word niche. And that's what I was thinking. It's no different than any other business with a niche. Like what we say all the time is if you try to be all things to all people, you end up being nothing to no one. And that's what the most of these gyms doing. As funny as you were talking, I was thinking the only gyms that you typically see that are doing anything to differentiate themselves in the marketplace are the, the soul cycles, the Barry boot camps, yeah. like the, like the, the different ones that are very focused on one aspect of working out, yep. not a full gym where you can do a little bit of everything. Yep. That's one thing I thought was interesting because the only thing that I've seen is like some particular, what's the one down the road, the cycle? Uh, uh, cycle bar. Cycle bar, yeah. yeah, yeah my yeah. wife went there, like she loves that. Yeah. But you're not going to go there and, and lift weights. Exactly. And a lot of those people have memberships here because they're like, yo, yeah. I like cycling, yeah. but you can't really get a full workout. You burn a bunch of calories, but you know, it's not that whole encompass thing. And like, you'll have like gyms that are meant for like meatheads, but they're all grungy and rusty weights. And it's like the true workout place. I'm like, all right, yeah, if you're like 40 or whatever, or if like, like the Venice beaches and stuff, yeah. it's like, all right, that's cool in some aspect, but I want to play this a little modern, a little edgy to it, mm -hmm. but clean that girls still want to come here. And that, you know, that market still is, you know, about it. It's like if Kanye West created a gym. <laughs> this would be that gym. So we were talking me, about Kanye yesterday, actually. <laughs> so tell me, dude, he's killing it right yeah. now. Like he is freaking... 
I got in this uh, debate with somebody last night, like what he did yesterday, like he's a freaking genius. <laughs> like, talk about someone that's hacking culture and knows how to create attention, good Lord. Um, so tell me a little bit about Core 24. Like what does that, what does that mean? Where did that come from? And what has that kind of evolved into? Yeah, so I mean, I have to give all the credits to my parents yeah. on that. I mean, they, my dad was pissed off at Gold's and he's a pilot, so he wanted a gym. The 24 comes from, because we used to be, or the gym in Seneca's 24 hours okay, a day. That's where that came from. And my dad was just pissed off that they closed at like seven o'clock and they were just this and that. So he was like, screw you guys. And I remember in church when I was like in early high school, he was like, I'm just opening my own gym. And I was like, I like the design aspect. So we were sketching yeah, up yeah. like places. And then he opened it like a hobby for him and his friends. And then that grew like into a business that my parents, it kind of plateaued and they were like, we have other jobs. This yeah. has been more than what we wanted. And that's kind of when I stepped in. I was yeah. like, limps. Because they were like, it's, it's past the hobby phase, but it's past like the growth phase. Yeah. So it was literally just plateauing. They had like bullshit managers in there that really wouldn't yeah. do anything. Everyone was just in motion. But the whole, I guess, brand behind it, they, my parents like came up with the core, like, you know, the core is the center of your body. You need yeah. that for your whole, you know, well being. Yeah. And, you know, kind of being a little bit hard, more hardcore mm -hmm. than like the typical average gym. Yeah. Um, and then it was always a bull that they came up with. And then yeah. we rebranded the bull to, you know, this yeah. type of deal and what's on my hat. Yeah. Um, you know, where it's more of like a clean, modern thing that you can put on anything. And yeah. that's like, I guess what we want, I guess the brand to, I guess show is like, it's cool to be bold and just like, I guess more cool. Like, cause everyone's hitting these other aspects of like, you know, it's cool to be hipsters or it's cool to be this, but like what happened to like, it's cool to like dress cool or something, yeah. you know, or just like yeah. be into fitness, but not being like, it's cool to care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, cause like cool everyone's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just like a, a weird state where I didn't feel at home at anywhere I went to like, and you know, besides like, like I said, you know, going to the clubs, I didn't really feel like there was like cool vibes anywhere. And that was it. It was like all these places I would go to, the aesthetics were shit. The vibe was pretty bad. And not everywhere. You can't, I mean, I can't sure. say that, sure. but like most of the places, especially in the South, man, they're yeah. kind of behind on that. And people walk in and be like, I feel like this should be in LA. I feel like this should be in New York. Yeah. Like, what is this doing here? Yeah. And I'm like, man, places like this can be in Greenville. And finding people like you yeah. is like what I like about having this as a platform, yeah. as um, a place where, uh, you know, people can meet other people and know, like, I, I never knew you existed here. We maybe yeah. never would have connected if this gym didn't make that bridge, yeah. you know, between the two. Um, exactly. And like, I was talking to a guy from Atlanta who just moved here and he was like, man, I don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And I started meeting or introducing him to someone else. He started chatting it up, you know, and I hope he can broaden his network of yeah. people through this platform. So um, give everybody, since this is a, a podcast, when obviously we're featuring it on our daily vlog, but since it's a podcast, like give everybody an idea. So we're talking about all these things and, and how edgy and, and the art, like give some examples of some stuff that we got in here that yeah. you're just so not when, gonna see. When a, you walk in, gym. when you walk in, we have these uh, lights on both sides of the wall. Well, you walk in and you go immediately downstairs. So there's like, like 50 steps. And then we have these lights that go every like three feet. So with these like 20 foot, like I guess pretty much uh, beam lights yeah. that are facing in. And then we have a, uh, 200 pairs of shoes uh, that go above you that were actually super hard to hang. I thought that was gonna be, I thought that was gonna be easy as shit. That was definitely not. We built scaffolding, and my girlfriend was holding the scaffolding while I'm up on an A-frame ladder on the top, like hanging. In my mind, it was like, if I fall and like break my legs from hanging sneakers, how mad am I gonna be at myself? Like, what kind of phone calls that gonna be? Um, it was but yeah, worth it. it was yeah, worth yeah. You walk in, and so there's the shoes, and the lights change colors, and then immediately you walk in. We have these poles with a bunch of like graffiti street art, like some Banksy vibes from there. Uh, we got beer. On on tap, pre-workout on tap, um, and having it where it's like, uh, I guess very open and very clean. We have, you know, like gray turf, yeah. you know, we, we try to take things and make it like, I guess, cooler, but better and more efficient. And just, you know, we have gold or silver dumbbells, uh, you know, with our logos posted on them. Um, and there's nothing like, we, I guess we can't afford to have stuff that doesn't get used. So everything yeah. that we have yeah. is like very specific, for people that actually work out. So there's not yeah. machines that don't get used. But um, like there's a big triangle uh, nano leaf um, right behind the um, cardio area. So we have all uh, colored lights in the cardio area. So it's, it's dim lit over there, but it's uh, very like colorful and there's like a big triangle looking thing over it. So just trying to, I wanted to have things that like are also Instagram appealing too. Yeah, so sure. people want to take I mean, pictures. That's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's why I'm here. Cause like, like you know, I was seeing these places and like, People don't really take pictures inside the gyms besides like a, a selfish, a, a shirtless yeah. selfie, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I was in LA actually, and people, there was lines of people to take a, 
a picture in front of this pink wall. And that was it. It's like the most Instagram place in mm -hmm. LA. Mm -hmm. And it's like Paul something. And it's just a freaking pink wall, man. Like, and people were just lining up, taking it. I was like, and there was wings too. I was about to say, is that the one he's standing in front of the wing? Yeah, we have wings in the girls' bathroom. So oh, we did nice, that. It's nice, so nice. much. Nice. And like literally, and that's what we wanted to have is like places or images and like art that people were like, I want to take this because it's cool, not because I know Corey and I just want to help him out. Like, people like, I want people to like come in here. Like, we have people that's on the street that'll be like, come in, be like, hey, can we have like a photo shoot in your yeah, hallway? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, dude, like, yeah. lo like, let's do it, you know, just because it has that like cool vibe. And it's, it's like, I guess, a surprise to see it in Greenville, too. Yeah, people oh, walk by and I'm like, time. what? And, um, you know, having it where, like I said, I want people to want to take it. So yeah. it's the authentic sharing, the more organic sharing, oh, absolutely. you know, instead of like, Hey, like I'll give you a free month if you post this, exactly. you know. I was just about to say, it, every other gym, it's all about the discount. Like, hey, bring your friend and ten days for ten dollars and and whatever, whatever, whatever. Bring it in. It's all based on this. It's it's um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, like commoditizing it basically it's like the only way to bring someone in that wouldn't normally come in is through some of a discount and it's funny because like everyone wants to go to that way and it's, it's sometimes hard to like not think of that but if you do that then people will not do it unless yeah. you give them something Absolutely. so if I'm like if you post this, I'll give you ten dollars. Where well, you're not going to post it unless I give you ten dollars every time you post it, type of deal. And I get like influencers and I get all that, but we're trying to do it a little more authentic. So it's yeah. like you want to do it because you want to do it, not yeah. because I'm like there's an incentive behind it. Yeah. And you know, I think that's showing a little bit more through social media. We're getting a lot of like fake shit out there. Yeah. yeah. And. I think people are becoming smarter and starting to weave through that, you know, yeah. a little bit more, you know. So yeah. and I want people to see it and be like, this is authentic. Yeah. This is real shit and not like some paid thing or oh, anything yeah. that like they're doing it because he asked them to or there's some other reason mm -hmm. behind it, you know. You're, you're preaching to the choir. And, and so I travel a whole lot. And so this is my first time to be able to come down here. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, let us Let's film a podcast. Let's record a podcast. I said, but I also want to sign up for a membership. And in my head, I was I was literally hoping. I was like, I hope it's expensive. <laughs> I'm like, because I hope they're charging a premium. Because on the opposite side of the discounting stuff, if you charge a premium, the people will appreciate it and they'll value it. Yeah. And I mean, the traditional gym model is how many members can we have that never come? Exactly. That's Planet Fitness. Yeah, well, that's everything. And, well, and that's how they're able to charge $9 or whatever. But, exactly. but that's that's always the mentality is we want to have as many people to sign up and then we never want to see them again yeah. as long as they pay monthly. But when you're creating a culture and a community, it's actually about like bringing people together so that people yeah. actually get to know each other and lo and behold, get in shape. Well, that's nice. Yeah, nice, yeah, exactly. Like, side, effect, <laughs> side effect of it. So what does it look like five years down the road, 10 years? down the road is the is the plan just more locations is the plan i mean i'm assuming there's apparel probably coming if not it's already here i see you wearing the hat i've seen shirts like what where do you see you taking the brand yeah it's funny so we've thought about that i guess more recently now since this is you know becoming a, a bigger thing here and i don't want to think too too much about it and lose sight of, of, yeah. of this gym and sometimes it's hard to you know balance those two but um you know i i, I want to I want to take over and flip the gym industry on its head and show that there can be cool aspects of it because you know a lot of people are just like I don't want to be a meathead or I don't want to do this and I, I want to give like I said that that platform where you can integrate more things into a gym and not just be like shirtless pictures or whatever yeah, yeah. and um, so I you know I, I want to keep opening gyms because I'm confident enough with our product we can go to any gym any any city and I can compete oh, and I, I am confident enough with my work ethic and how much that you know we really like care about I yeah. guess making a movement in the culture that uh, that I can compete with Equinox and Golds yeah. and you know even shout out Bradley Martin's gym because I've been compared to that one a bunch yeah, yeah. out in LA and I'll go right beside him and I have no problem being able to compete with that yeah. but I think if it leads into some type of apparel, because I really like fashion, yeah, yeah. I would love to get into that. That's kind of getting saturated now. Yeah, it's it's getting I mean, it's 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 like the the lowest barrier to entry for any. It is that, that's, wants, that wants to put entrepreneur on their Instagram. It's handle. funny, man. I'll get daily people coming up and want to like collab with us because they started a, a it's a, a t shirt company, but yeah, they call Shopify it you know store. yeah they call it some brand. So I, I yeah exactly. So I'm really like looking to maybe like even like art like in-house making our stuff yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. or something i want to get really creative with it but you know i don't want to lose sight of focusing like you said earlier on one thing and being the most badass dope gym that anyone's ever walked walked into don't you start doing like just, i'm just like thinking out loud 
but so we were in New York this uh, this weekend. We went into Nike Soho, and the whole reason was because the day before I saw this dude. He had some fresh. They're all white Vapor Max, and they did this like custom marbleized like dipping on them. And I was like, where in the world did you get these? And he was like, they're doing it at Nike Soho. Two more days. I was like, oh my god, I'm there. So I got there, and they had this whole setup. You know, you choose your shoe. It was like a air. It was a, um, a Vapor Max, like the new two uh, seventies, or like a Air Max ninety, all white. Yeah. And you pick. There's like fifteen colors. You pick which colors, and then they like dip it and like marbleize this pattern, and they ship it to you in like two weeks. It literally looked. Didn't it look like just like this? Like the yeah. like the setting that it was in. Like you could have where you got. You just set up like a screen print shop yeah. like in here where you're literally like printing on demand. Like you have a bunch of the photos. Of like all the different designs, yeah. you're like, oh, you want a shirt? Cool, get your workout in. And you have somebody <laughs> back here, like freaking screen printing. They hanging it up and like, oh, by the way, here's your shirt. Yeah, like, you that, can do so much like cool stuff that way. Because the big thing with with apparel is, that always scared me looking at apparel was inventory. Like you're buying a bunch of inventory at sizes, and all yep. of a sudden now you got a garage full of boxes of yep. like extra medium <laughs> that you can't sell to anyone that you're yep. having to get at a discount. It, and, and our apparel that we've done recently has always been small quantities. Yeah. And two reasons is because I don't want a back yeah. inventory yeah. of a bunch of that. But another reason is like I don't like having the same shit that everyone else has. Yeah. So it's like I don't want to make more than 20 or 30 or 50 of that one thing because I don't want you walking around and seeing five people being like, man, that's the same shirt. That's the same yeah. hat. You know, and that's always been me, whether it's been, you know, growing up or anything. And not it has to be more expensive. I just always have wanted to have something unique that not everyone can have. Yeah. You know, and that – I guess aspect of it is like we're only going to make a certain amount of shirts so if you have it you know you're one of 25 people that have it so you're not going to see it all over the place um, and that's like I said that's been a, a, a teetering thing I was like do we go into that right now or do we just keep focusing on being the best possible badass culture gym yeah. around you know I, sure. I don't want to lose sight on what I know we're best at yeah. and it could you know create something yeah. or you know it could like you know be a distraction so that's a a funny thing that yeah. we've been playing around with and what I guess could be our next thing because I mean with that you can obviously create other sales streams because you can sell that anywhere yeah. especially online yeah. but with a gym you have to physically be here yeah. or in the area I can't sell a gym membership to someone yeah. in LA exactly. you know for here uh, and maybe I could but I have never done that so I don't know so, if it's possible so before we before we get done here I do want to ask, ask one tactical question so looking back, going from the, the first gym, this evolution into what it has become now, what's one thing through that process that you quit doing that you think helped you to succeed or helped you to keep evolving fast? What's one thing that you quit doing? Um, I quit caring about going out, I think was a big thing. I That's quit. The, I really like, it did hit me one night. I was. It was when uh, that song like made it from the bottom or... Now we're here, some yeah, bullshit. Drink, yeah, yeah, and I was in the club with some <laughs> like people that were all right, and it, it clicked. I was like, all these people I'm around have yeah. not made it here, and their hands are in the air, like, yeah, we made it. And I was like, no, motherfuckers, none of you have made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And like, like maybe a couple, maybe like two, but I was like, I haven't either. I was like, what am I doing? Like, am, am I just gonna like keep just like doing this shit and every night and or every weekend, yeah. just like going out and and like deep down, I was like, my. Like it, it caused like relationship problems because like I didn't want to go out with yeah. them and I was like and they're like what's going on and I was like I'm trying to really make something for myself and I I'm okay with sacrificing that yeah. now so that was like a big thing that like clicked where you know I enjoy having a good time I, I love having a good time but I was like this is doing nothing for me yeah. you know like like I love going to the clubs but like this is like I could be doing way more things and it was yeah. just like I, I guess. That was a big turning point where I was just like, let's let's yeah. let's let's keep it moving in a different aspect of it, you know. I love that answer, man. It's almost like you're like you're like starting from the bottom, now we're here, but we're still hanging out here. Yeah, like, exactly. like we're still hanging out like we're here with these these here people. Yeah. And until you start hanging out here where you are, yep. you're not gonna go up way up above. Yeah. And for me, I was the same way, like I gave this uh, speech last night, this keynote at this uh, association event. And I was like, hey, who wants to have better work-life balance? Raise your hand. Show your hands. Who wants to have work-life balance? Of course, everybody shoots their hands up. I'm like, well, I just don't believe it exists. And the reality is that truly successful people only balance with addition, not subtraction. Because everyone wants to talk about work-life balance in regards to taking away from something. And it's yeah. always taken away from work. Yeah. Like, you don't ever hear somebody going, man, 
dude, I've been going so hard at the gym this last quarter. I've been so I've been so focused on my family. You know, the next few months, I think I'm going to take it easy on the family and gym and yeah. start working more. Then that's never yeah. the that's never the conversation. It's always, man, I really need to be at home more. I'm going to have to start working a little less. Well, do you realize that you can freaking balance a scale by yeah taking away, but you can also add to, and you can balance it. So that's what we always talk about. We're like, you need to be home more. You need to work out more. Like, great, be home more, work out more. Doesn't mean you need to work less. Yep. It may mean you need to go out less, which is what you did. Yep. It may mean you need to sleep less, which is what we do. Yep. And and that'll balance it. And that's the way that you level up in life. And that's what I did like four months ago. I literally. Things have been like progressing so fast in my life and on this upward trajectory. And I started like literally auditing every area of my life. And I was like, what are the areas that pose any potential risk or any just weaknesses? And I literally was like, drinking. I'm like, done. Yeah. Four months ago. I hadn't had a sip of alcohol in four months, maybe a little over four months now. And it was simply looking at it like a business decision. I was like, I have all of these aspirations, all these things I'm trying to get accomplished. That's the one thing at the very least will slow me down, but could end it all. Yeah. Quite frankly, if you do something stupid. Um, So it's just like done. And then just keep moving, 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 moving. And it's just the majority of people aren't willing to take that leap and get out of that scene, like you said, or take that leap and to quit doing something that our whole motto and one of the things that I live by is if you seek pleasure, the world will deliver you pain. If you seek pain, if you seek discomfort, the world will deliver you pleasure. So we try to put ourselves in the most uncomfortable and that, whether that being workout, it's no different than workout. Like yeah. if you seek discomfort in the gym, you're going to be delivered with gains, with, yep. with results. Yep. If you just seek pleasure, if you come in here just to have a good time, you just come in here and do stuff that just doesn't really push you, you're yep. not going to get anything from it. Exactly. And ultimately it's going to end in something negative yeah and so that's just everything that we try to do with our lives so hey man where can everybody find you online yeah so um we're like i said we're all about content creation right now so uh ig is where the biggest you know i guess place you can find us so on the gram it's at core 24 gbl and um you can pretty much find everything through there our website is core 24 gbl.com um but yeah that that's where we're at and that's where and we're gonna find you uh, it's Corey Kiefer. It's Got that's K O R Y K E E F E R. Uh, guys, I would highly recommend you you follow both, uh, but especially you may be thinking like, oh, well, I live in South Dakota. Like, why would I follow a gym in Greenville, South Carolina? I promise you, if you follow this gym, you will be inspired because you'll see things that are new. You'll see things that you're like, man, that's sick. Or you'll just get ideas. You'll be inspired uh, by what they're doing because the content, at the very least, is just great to look at. Yeah. Uh, but the stuff that they're putting out, the videos that they're putting out, this next level on the marketing. And like I said, that's what brought me here today. I, like I was like, man, if we have a free couple of hours in the afternoon, I've been meaning to get by here and wanted to film this podcast and get some footage inside here and, and finally get a workout in and to piggyback on that is i can't take credit for the content so um my my guys uh darwin uh he's he's my main uh photographer have to give him a shout out and then one too so those are the guys that are really like making the content so they're on our instagram so check those guys out too because they're there's what what's behind the scenes actually making the stuff i'm just you know, the hit, cool hit, hit the, up the cool thing about that though is like someone may say that and they say that and like a, well it's not me you know it's this but it's the fact that you had the audacity to have a gym that has a photographer a videographer like that's not normal like <laughs> like the anytime fitness down the road like the gold's gym down the road they don't have a videographer like creating like sick like ASAP music videos <laughs> based on like outdoor training like like that's that's what we're talking about when we talk about this fat, like this crazy forward thinking that just isn't happening. My here. dad calls me up. He's like, why do you have a photographer? Why are, why are you paying a photographer full time on staff? And I'm like, look, that's his mindset is what most of the gyms have. You know, it's like, what, 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 that doesn't create, you know, revenue immediately. Why do we have that? But, you know, looking at it from our perspective is that's we have to have that. Trust me, I completely understand. Yeah. I have a grown man that travels with me 24-7 <laughs> with, with a camera. And yeah. We are not short of conversations of why in the world are you doing yeah. <laughs> Are you doing this in Greenville, South Carolina? Now, when we were in New York, yeah, you see a little bit more of it. But yeah. where we are, it's like, 
this is very strange. And it is strange, but it's the best thing I've ever done to elevate my branding and elevate my personal brand and the content that we're putting out, which is awesome. So, man, I appreciate uh, the time. I know you got a lot going on in here. I can't wait to hopefully try to get a workout in yeah. uh, this evening. I'm um, here, and man, appreciate everything that you're doing. Make sure that you go check it out. It's at core 24 GVL uh, and at Corey Kiefer. Check them out. And with that, this is the Breadwinner Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we'll see you soon. What's up, guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page. Then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.